Oh, what a nail! As Jonathan Bostick gets separated, Mike Willie from the football. Yeah! Yeah! Yes! Yes! Yes, man. You already know what it is. Fourth quarter boy sports. I'm your illustrious host, Professor Lake. Mm. Like, comment, share, subscribe, 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 subscribe. Be a fourth quarter boy for life. For life. Yeah. Bears. Go down to Arizona. And we escape with the victory 16 to 14. Chicago Bears win. Victory Monday is in effect. <laughs> you already know it's popping, man, so I ain't gonna waste any time. We're gonna jump right into this breakdown. Things started out rocky out there in Arizona. I'm sure a lot of Bear fans were perplexed. Uh, in the first quarter of the game. Here we have one of the best defenses having a communication problem, maybe a mental error early on in the first drive uh, for the Arizona Cardinals. Sam Bradford hits a wide receiver or a tight end. He scores a touchdown, untouched, no one around him. Just looked like blown coverage. I think it was Danny Trevathan's guy and uh, I'm not sure if he knew to stay with him or if he just got pushed off the route and the separation was just so enormous. Either way, uh, we had a guy wide open running to pay dirt. And before the offense gets a chance to get anything started, the Arizona Cardinals get the ball back again. And they score in similar fashion, but on the other side of the field. So what we're talking about is game that uh, a team really didn't want to lose. And I'm talking about the Arizona Cardinals fighting their heart out, doing whatever they could to stay into the game. But this is a situation that the Bears found themselves in a lot last season, just not having a good enough team to finish the game. And it seems like the shoe was on the other foot this time, and the Bears were the better team day. They proved that with improvement on the defense, adjustments made on the defense. They settled down and they just locked down the Arizona offense for the rest of the game. We'll get to that a little bit later. Offensively, we continue to see the same struggles game after game from Mitchell Trubisky. A guy that I want to like First, I really wasn't crazy about trading up to pick up a Mitch Trubisky. But once he became a Chicago Bear, you know I want the best for him. I'm afraid that some of my doubts are becoming a reality for everyone to see on center stage. But I have faith that this is a process. And I think that Mitchell Trubisky will get better and better and better. Uh, the more he plays ball, the more he takes on the coaching, the more he understands the playbook. Um, I think the anticipation and the things that we're expecting as far as pre-snap reads, uh, they're going to come. Hopefully sooner than later, but as Matt Nagy continues to reiterate, it will be a process. You know, so offensively, Trubisky went 24-25 for 220 yards. Uh, zero touchdown passes, one interception, and uh, he fumbled as well. Not a great game. He was able to move the ball up and down the field from time to time. Guinea seems to not have the anticipation necessary to make big boy throws, nor does he have the downfield accuracy uh, to make big boy throws. But I'm not gonna get down on Mitch Trubisky. Let's go ahead and get to this running game. Jordan Howard had 24 rushes for 61 yards, one touchdown. 
two catches for 20 yards. Relatively productive day for our guy Jordan Howard. You know, um, I'd like to see a little bit more out of Jordan Howard with 24 carries. But again, this is a new system. I think that once he gets adjusted to where the holes are going to be, I think that um, Jordan Howard will pick up the pace and uh, have more explosive plays. He did have one or two explosive runs during this game as well. Uh, Cohen had five rushes for 50, 53 yards, three catches for 15 yards. So all, all together, our backs are pretty productive, you know. Um, so that's not a bad. So put together, the backs were pretty productive on the day. On the receiving side of the offense, we got Burton leading all receivers with four catches for 55 yards. Behind him, we got Allen Robinson uh, with three catches for 50 yards. And then we have Anthony Miller with four catches for 35 yards. And, uh, you know, I'm really wondering what's going on with Anthony Miller's shoulder. How long will he be out? Um, he seems like he was going to be a pretty integral part of this offense. A uh, very talented guy that we're going to have to work our way through. It's going to be a next man up mentality. Um, and the way Josh Bellamy has been playing, we'll see what happens with that. But uh, going forward, I think we'll see a little bit more of Kevin White uh, going into the next game. But our receiver's performance has a lot to do uh, with where Mitchell Trubisky is at in his development. And later on down the line, I think Mitch will be a little bit more productive and you'll see a couple more 100 yard pass games by uh, these guys catching the ball. You wanna see Mitchell Trubisky break out of that shell and you wanna see the offense start clicking to him and wanna see him start hitting these throws downfield, being more accurate with the deep ball, anticipating throws a little bit better, recognizing the blitz a little bit better and uh, you know, being a little more secure with the football. He has been known to put the football on the ground and uh, you know, he needs to be more secure with the football. But I'm willing to wait. I'm willing to wait. I'm not gonna drill Mitch Trubisky right now, but I'm not gonna lie to you guys. It is kind of disappointing seeing some of these other quarterbacks that are just coming into the league. And then you got Pat Mahomes from last year and Deshaun Watson you know, lighten it up. But as we said before, you got to be honest about the situation. These guys have way more experience in college, uh, way more experience looking at different defenses and uh, playing in big time situations. And Mitchell Trubisky just doesn't have that track record in college. So everything that he's learning, he's developing uh, on the run while he's playing NFL games. And uh, we're seeing the development take place right in front of our eyes. Defensively, oh, how I love this defense. Wow. Wow. All I have to say is Khalil Mack. He is a difference maker. He's allowing cornerbacks to make plays on the ball. He's allowing this defensive front to cause pressure consistently throughout the game. I mean, this is something that you really got to deal with as an offensive coordinator when you're going against the Chicago Bears. You got a front seven uh, that could rush the passer and stop the run. And you got athletic linebackers that are going to get to the outside and stop some of these routes out in the flat and screen plays. We're pretty good tacklers as well. Now, let's not forget about the first couple possessions uh, where there was a little breakdown but I'm so proud of how they were able to buckle it down, realize who they were playing, and just say, no more. You're not going to score on us. You're not. And that's exactly what they did. Uh, they took the game over defensively. They allowed Mitch Trubisky opportunity after opportunity and after opportunity to put this team ahead. The score was 16 to 14. And we only scored one touchdown. One touchdown. Okay? Twitter.com. So, nine J points J comes J from J a guy, Cody Parquet. I'll get to him a little bit later. I like to call him Parquet, even though his name is Parquet. So, we had Mac. 
Again, coming up big in the tackle department with five solo tackles, two sacks, and one forced fumble. Roquan Smith comes up on the board with four tackles. Then another big guy always comes up big in pressure situations. You got Hicks with three tackles and one sack. You know, last year around this time, they were running a guy like Hicks into the dirt. You see they have a decent rotation on the defensive front line. Everybody's getting an opportunity to say they were a part of this glorious Bears defense that are dominating and kicking ass. Pardon. So you know, if Prince of Mukamara goes down with a hamstring injury, and you know, I've been saying that the secondary has been pretty questionable, but man, they, they've been stepping up in critical situations, and that's what matters. Sometimes, you know, you give up a play here, you give up a play there in the midst of the battle, but when it's really critical, these cornerbacks have been coming up with big plays. So Prince of Mukamara goes down, Bryce Callahan steps in. Callahan steps in, he gets a pick. Sherrick McManus gets a pick. Who else got a pick today? Eddie Jackson got a pick. Three interceptions, one forced fumble. It's hard to win a game like that. And if you could get your defense to play even close to that level consistently throughout a 16 game season, you're going to give your offense a big opportunity to win games. All you have to do is be competent. Now, yes, our defense put us behind the eight ball early on. Uh, but, yeah, they did give our offense plenty of opportunities to get back in the game. While Mitch Trubisky develops, Matt Nagy has to sigh a breath of relief because he decided to keep Vic Fangio, one of the biggest signings this offseason outside of Khalil Mack. Who else came up big? Bilal Nichols came up big with a tackle for a loss. Critical situation. I'm not sure if the Bears are still confident in Jonathan Bullard. Uh, he made a bonehead play as well. So um, we'll just see, you know. This defense is looking good. I think when they when they get focused and, and they buckle down, they can stop any offense in the NFL. The defense did pretty good for themselves. It caused four turnovers. They were only on the field for 48 snaps. They held the offense to three for 10 in third down conversions. They're getting people off the field. 53 yards rushing, 168 yards passing. That's a good game, fellas. That's a good defensive battle right there. You win, with numbers like that, you win. Now just going back to the offense and thinking about Mitchell Trubisky, you know, I really wanna see him be more accurate on the deep pass. You know, this is a big thing that he's missing out on. Uh, he's leaving yards on the field, you know. These guys are wide open, and with a little bit better anticipation, I think he could throw a better ball. He started to do that a little bit with Allen Robinson along the sideline, uh, Trey Burton along the sideline. So I think plays that he's comfortable with, uh, you can see him throw a better ball, you know. So we'll find out what happens. I want to see him develop, you know, better deep ball accuracy. I did like his ability to, to help bring this team back. You know, you can't say that Mitchell Trubisky's game was all bad. You know, he was a part of the drives, even though he had a lot of help from the referees today, something that the Bears are not used to. Uh, you know, you got to take advantage of that. And he did, and we got ourselves in scoring situations, and we, we escaped Arizona. We did. You got it the hell up out of there. Defensively, again, I like how Bryce Callahan stepped up. Stepped up big. Khalil Mack continues to show you why he's the Mack daddy. One of the fan favorites, Sherrick McManus, coming off of special teams. Uh, we had a little setback at the beginning of the game. We were able to flip the switch and stop this Arizona Cardinals offense all game long. There it is, man. Bears victory, 16 to 14. Man, we're going to savor this all week until we got to play Tampa Bay. We'll get into a preview of that a little bit later on during the week. But uh, right about this time, we're going to get into the fourth quarter boys awards. This week, we're going to have four fourth quarter boys. 
The first fourth quarter boy award goes to Bryce Callahan uh, for stepping up big in place of the injured Prince of Mukamara. Uh, he's still locked down to position as if he was a starter. Was able to pull off a nice turnover in a critical time. One of the four turnovers in a row uh, that we were able to pull off this game, stopping Arizona from scoring even a field goal. So the first fourth quarter boy award goes to Bryce Callahan. The second fourth quarter boy award goes to Khalil Mack. Again, you know, he's a turnover machine. I mean, this guy makes the defense play so much better uh, in the secondary and up front. He comes up big with the forced fumble on Sam Bradford. Another critical time when they were going in, kick a field goal, we were able to get the ball back and keep the points off the board. So the second fourth quarter boy award goes to Khalil Mack. The third fourth quarter boy award goes to Sherrick McManus. Sherrick McManus was able to help seal the deal he doesn't play defense that often, but uh, he makes plays for us on special teams, but he was able to step up as well. And uh, he made a nice interception along the sideline. Pretty poor throw, uh, but hey, this is football. This is NFL football. When you take advantage, when you can take advantage. So the third, fourth quarter boy award goes to Sherrick McManus. All right. Now the last fourth quarter boy award goes to Cody Parkey, the kicker. He missed one early on, but he came back strong in the second half, uh, helping us win the game with three field goals in a row and just helping the Bears eke out a victory in Arizona. So the last award goes to kicker Cody Parkey. Okay, all right, man. So I'm really hyped up. I'm pumped up right now. It's a Bears victory. It's going to be a Bears Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You know how it is, man. And like I said before, I got my list, man. Everybody who was out there who had something bad to say about the Bears. Oh, I can't watch the Bears anymore. I'm a Green Bay Packer fan. All of you guys, man, I got my list, man. And uh, you know I'm about to see you guys in a minute. So with that in mind, you know what it is. It is fourth quarter boy sports on a Bears victory, 16 to 14 in Arizona. It is your illustrious host, Professor Lake. <clears throat> I already know what it is, man. Like, comment, share, subscribe, 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 subscribe. Yeah. Be a fourth quarter boy for life. For life. Hit that notification bell, doggy. Hey, yo, man. Holler at me a little bit later. We're going to hit you guys off with that preview. It's Professor Lake. Bears win. Bears win. Bears win. Sitting on top of the NFC North throne. We are out. And this is oh! Jonathan Bostick gets separated. Mike Willie from the football.